How have you found your voice as an artist? I've just written stories that I want to write. I've never tried to write something that I don't want to write. And, and I'll explain that in a way that I've, I've been pitched certain books or IP and, and at first it'll be exciting, but then I'm like, I'm not, I don't care about this. I don't care about this subject. I don't care about this uh, world. So then I don't do it. So I don't do anything that I don't want to do. And most of the time I'm excited about my original stories and, and I'll get an idea whether I'm inspired by a moment in my life or I'm inspired by a song or I'm inspired by a hike that I went on. Those are the things that excite me and, and keep me going from, from the seed of the idea to writing the outline to writing the entire script. If I'm not excited about that seed of the idea, then I can't keep moving forward in order to finish that script, which is what I always want to do. Like I said, I always want to have a finished product. I have a ton of friends who start scripts and then never finish them. Or like I said, they start short films and never finish them. But I think the most important thing to do, especially with the first draft of writing a script, is just finishing it. The first draft is what I always call a vomit draft, and it's never any good. But guess what? It's 90 pages long. Great. I've reached my goal of 90 pages. Now, the hard work is rewriting the first draft. So then I rewrite it, and, and I get it to a place where I think it's okay to be seen by the four or five people that I trust to give me good critical notes on my scripts. And then, and then I get those notes and then I continue to rewrite, continue to rewrite. But for me, it's always about getting that page count to 90 pages, especially with the first draft and then proceeding with the rewrites from there. That's interesting. Do you think the math science part of your brain has really trained you to make sure that you finish things that, that that there's a that it all works out somehow. yeah yeah I really do and it's so strange because because that didn't click until a few years ago where where I'm really structured about writing scripts and I'm like okay I'm gonna write 10 pages this week and then 10 pages next week and I write it down in my planner and I cross it off once I'm done and I get to 20 40 60 80 and 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 that really excites me and so um I, I remember one thing from all of my engineering years. I walked into my first class um, in college and the teacher wrote out engineer equals problem solver. And I said, huh. I said, I am a problem solver. And, and I use that in all of my work. I use that in my screenwriting. I'm like, okay, well, how do I get this character out of this situation? Okay, how do I... How do I finish the script? How do I, what's, if I've already written the end, how do I get there? What are these middle scenes in between? Um, even with uh, being on set of Definition Please, I kept thinking about engineer equals problem solver and I was like, okay, we've lost this location. How am I gonna problem solve getting a location without freaking out my cast and crew in the meantime? And so I do believe uh, I, my training as a, an engineer and in math and science has truly helped my artwork. Because even in, um, I mentioned that I also write poems and I write songs and I had written poems and then I got together with my friend Will Collier who composes our music and he taught me the basic structure of a song. And I could take that structure and I'm like, oh, great. I can definitely follow this formula to write this song. So once again, that was my math mind writing an artistic song. I love that. If you were to be the teacher at a screenwriting course or filmmaking and you wrote screenwriter equals, we actually have a chalkboard here, but screenwriting equals, and what would be the other word on the end of the equal sign? I'm going to say problem solver. <laughs> okay. Screenwriter equals problem solver. Yeah, okay. because you're always solving problems. You're, 
you're coming up with a premise and you're always putting your characters into problematic situations that they have to get out of and only you can take them out of those situations and and that's part of what's exciting you let the characters guide you into their own stories and and you are now solving their problems okay and then actor equals Entertainer. Okay. And last but not least, filmmaker equals? Visionary. I like it. How do you know what you're creating is coming from your unique voice? When I'm excited about it. So something that was really fun for me on Definition Please is that when we started shooting, I... the. Day before we started day one of shooting, it felt like the way you feel before the first day of school. And I was really excited and I couldn't really get to sleep, but I knew that I had to sleep. And that's when you know, that's when you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're telling a story that's unique to you and your point of view when you're in that moment and you just can't wait to wake up in the morning and, and get to work and tell the story that you've been living with for a few years. And that that's what's exciting to me. When I can be excited about rewriting a script that, that I had uh, poured my unique voice into and, and, and you know, be able to change that or adjust it and make it a better story and and I just get excited like I said during the during the pandemic when I was um, pushing out all these scripts it was just a joy to sit at my laptop and get back into these lives of the characters that I had created and and each one of those characters had their own unique voice, which wasn't necessarily mine. So it was exciting to take on those roles as well. Well, you say you don't take something on unless it excites you. So you already know once you've taken something on, you know that you're committed to it. You're not going to, you know, because some people might be persuaded, oh, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. But it sounds like you already know, you have a, a real definition inside of you that you know this is something I'm going to stick with. I have no problem saying no to things. So I have walked away from a lot of big projects and ideas that may have made me a lot of money, but that I wasn't necessarily excited about. So that that's number one. I listen to my voice. I listen to how I feel when I'm reading something or being pitched something. And so... I, I suppose I have the Marie Kondo philosophy of, oh, is this going to bring me joy? And generally, if it's my original idea, yes. And then I continue on with that. But if it's someone else's idea, then I really have to think about it and say, okay, is this going to bring me joy or, or am I going to get stressed out? And, and I'm not someone who gets stressed out ever. So... So the, those are my two questions that I ask myself in terms of taking on a role or taking on someone else's work in terms of writing or directing it. So have you ever rethought something that you turned down and thought, hey, no, oh, no, you were very clear on it. Yeah, very clear, very clear on it. I, I don't regret anything in my life. And, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, well, don't you regret going to engineering school instead of going to acting school or in getting an arts education. And, and like you mentioned, I use my engineering and my math and science background to uh, create my scripts, to create my stories. And they have gone hand in hand, which is really exciting. So I've, I've never regretted anything, any decisions that I've made in the past. What compels you to write? different things, different ideas. I'm always inspired by experiences. So I think it's really important for writers to go out and experience life and not just be sitting in their room all day and writing. So 
you know, something that I really loved from my Upright Citizen Brigade improv and sketch classes, one of the assignments that a teacher had given us was go out and do something new this week, something that you wouldn't necessarily do. Try something new. So I think during that class, I, I ate insects for the first time, which I didn't really love. I, th I think I watched like an old action movie. I'm not really into action movies, so I just kind of watched that. And, and it was great because you have to expand your mind. You have to learn about different things. And, and those things will inspire you. So whether it's a character who's really into action movies, whether it's it's a scene at a restaurant where they're only serving insects, whether it's so I those different experiences will inspire something and strike a match in your brain for maybe not a project that you're currently working on, but maybe something in the future. And so so I continue to do that even after taking the class. I continue to read something that I wouldn't normally read or or try a new food that I that I wouldn't normally try. And that's that's what's exciting to me. Just new experiences, I believe, inspire me all the time. How do you create a meaningful story? I think as long as you're telling the story from your heart, then other people will gravitate towards it. So I wanted to tell a story about a specific type of family that went through universal problems. And, and I wasn't sure what an audience was gonna think about it. And, and I really made it for myself and I made it for my friends and family because I knew that they would enjoy it. And then all of a sudden different audiences were pulled towards it and really enjoying the film. And that was, that was kind of a surprise to me. <laughs> but, but it's exciting to, to find out that your story that you put a lot of heart into is also emotionally affecting other people as well. Did people come up to you after screenings? I mean, we didn't have a lot of screenings because of COVID. Oh, so these so, are virtual festivals? So, so it was more through um, tweeting at me or direct messaging me or through emails where I was learning that these uh, these people, these audience members who had watched the movie really enjoyed it and really felt connected to it and felt something, they felt seen. You talked about making sure you only do projects that you feel compelled to do, that you don't want to do something, you don't want to go to something you don't want to be at. What's your thought on creating a story that's emotional versus one that's more commercial? I like them both. I'm trying to create both stories. I think it's possible to create a commercial story with emotion and heart. And I think that's that's the beauty of making a big budget film and you can sneak heart in there. <laughs> But but show it to a wider audience, and that's exciting to me. I think I I love comedy, so I'm gonna stick to comedic stories. But even within that comedy, I believe there's gotta be heart, no matter what budget you're making the project for. And yeah, I I have ideas that are very commercial and. I'm looking at it from my own specific, unique point of view, and, and I haven't seen necessarily those stories commercially out there yet. So it's exciting to also create for a bigger budget. So you don't think there's commercial stories that have some type of a, a meaning? Maybe just a few out there? I think there are definitely commercial stories that have that have heart and meaning, and I think even more so today since studios are only making five or six movies a year, they have to find a way to make sure that these audiences coming in relate to these characters on a certain level and, and are rooting for them. And so that, I mean, for example, I just watched a film and I don't know if you would call it 
big budget, but Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. And I thought it was so funny, so absurdly comedic, but there is a story there about female friendships and 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 I just love that. And it it is a you know bigger budget film with with stars and and so that that's the kind of work that I'd love to make at some point. Sure. Was that an A twenty four movie? That remember. was a Lionsgate film. Oh, okay. All right. I thought I've seen trailers for it and I, I looked cute. I was like, okay, I would watch it's it. It's great. Yeah. I loved it.